Hi everyone, David Maley here, and today we're going to talk about fitting the actual ARIMA model. Uh, and what we've done is, this is the fourth uh, video in this series. So this, uh, this graph right here is what we left off in, in the last one, where we determined that there was a lag, and the lag was at 7. If you haven't watched that one, please go back and watch it. Again, this is the fourth video, so make sure you've watched the other three before it. So we've determined, we did an exploratory data analysis. Then we in the first video, we did... We decomposed the uh, values in our data set in the second one to remove seasonality, trending, and cycling, and stuff like that, and to identify if there were any issues with that. The third one, uh, what we did was we looked into uh, auto, auto correlations, and um, we determined the lag, as I just said. So in this video, what we're going to do is we're actually going to build the ARIMA model. So let's move this over here. Let's get right into it. So basically what we're going to do is we're going to take this value right here. We built this up in the previous videos, the seasonal count, okay? And what we're going to do is we're going to do the auto ARIMA function, which is right here. And all we do is put that in, comma, and then we want the seasonal to be false. We're turning off seasonal, okay? And so if we do this, let's go through this, and we hit, this was nice about uh, our studio you just hit control and enter runs it for you and look what we got down here so what that does the auto arima gives us three values remember i was telling you in the previous videos that we have pdq right three values p d and q and this is p this is d and this is q and so the auto arima is telling us that we should have the optimal would be two zero and three all right and it's telling us the coefficients the sigma values and, and the uh, log likelihood and things like that. But what we want to do is we want to primarily stick with this. So if you see this right here on that deseasonalized data, we have 203. Okay. Now, but hold on, before we go and say, oh, it's definitely 203 as those numbers, what we're going to do is we're going to evaluate this. So the next one here, we're going to evaluate this. And basically, we want to ask the question does this model make sense? Is it going to be accurate? So what we have to do is we have to fit it. So what we're going to do is we're going to take the, again, the same thing. See this? Auto Rima, de-seasonal count, seasonal equals false. The same thing we just did right there. Instead of printing it right here, I'm going to put that into this vector or data frame called fit. See it? I'm going to do that right here. So let's do that. And that puts it into fit, which now has 18 variables in it, which is basically that data in it. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to do this TS display. Okay, and that's a function which is going to take residuals of fit. Okay, the lag max of 45. I could pick any number I want here, but you'll see here you want to have a number high enough out here to show you enough of the data. If I pick like lag max of 10, I'm only going to see at the point 10, and there could be lags, many lags beyond that that could affect my data and make it inaccurate. So I want a higher lag max value. And then what we're looking at is this is with the 111, the default. So let's do this. So let's take this. We're going to fit it, and we're going to display it. So let's do this. There we go. Now watch. This is a little different. So now what we're looking at is 111, which is the default, not the auto rema we just saw of 2, 0, and 3, or whatever it was. And... Uh, what this is doing is showing us that at 111, we have, boom, a lag at 7. And then you can see in the PACF, it backs up the ACF. So there's the lag at 7, like you saw. And then what happens is it continues it on into the next uh, value. So you can see it continues on at the same, uh, see the same distance here, same distance here, same distance here, same distance here. And the value just goes down each time. So this is the previous lags being built in. So this one we have to work with. So what we got here is we definitely have a lag at 7. So as you can see in my notes right here, I put the graph shows serious lags at 7. So we want to modify this model for P or Q equals 7. Most likely you're going to do it for Q because the P would be different. That, that affects it much more in a much more robust way, which we don't want to do here. So... What we want to do is we want to look at another fit. So I already built this fit value right here. I'm going to build a second one just like it. But instead of the auto arima, see this is the auto arima working right here. I'm going to use arima and I'm going to input in my own uh, p, q, p and uh, you know all these values, p, d, q values. So p is 1, d is 1. Remember we already determined that the difference should be 1. 
and the uh, seven is going to be to take care of my lag. See that that's my lag, and I'm going to put that right here in there to deal with that. So I've got instead of one one one, which they did in the last one, I've got one one seven. So if I run this, this is the way to do a non-auto arima. Okay, same thing, the seasonal count. But I'm doing the order equals C, and in here, in this little array, you have 117. Okay? And we do that for fit two. And then what we do below it is the same thing. Set TS display, same thing. We're doing the same TS display. Residuals, but we're using fit two. I'm using a lag max of 20 this time instead of 45 because I don't need to go that far out. And uh, main, I could if I wanted to, but main is the same thing again, but we're not doing the 111 model residuals. So let's do this one now and see what happens. Remember that this is fit two, not fit one. So we do that. Remember what we saw earlier? And see the lag is when it goes beyond the upper or lower bounds. Look at it now. So now with the 117, okay, we have our data here and we see in the ACF and the PACF in both we have no more lags. I mean, we do, but they're within an acceptable range. They're within the blue lines, okay? So that means we have a good ordered um, build for or, or model for our uh, ARIMA model. So 117 looks like a good fit. So what we're going to do in the next video, so this video, what we did was we just determined quickly how to determine the correct ARIMA models and in the next model, we're actually going to forecast that, or the next, I'm sorry, the next video, we're going to forecast that and show you how to uh, display the forecast and then test it again to see if it's accurate or not. So this one, again, what we did was used auto Rima first, right here, and we determined, you know, what should it be? It said 203, remember? So then we went and did a fit and with an auto arima and we did it with 111 so we did a default and uh, what we got was there was a lag at 7 so to take care of that what we did was we took that 7 and put it right in here and we ran a second fit based on that and this second fit then when it's displayed as you see right here clearly shows that we are within the bounds now so this is acceptable and very accurate but we're still going to do a little bit more testing because we want to make sure of that. So in the next one, we're going to actually forecast this. So, well, actually, you know what? Let's do that in this one. So let's just forecast that right now because I want you to be able to see that. So it's not that hard. Let's just do it right here. So we got Fcast, and we're going to take forecast of fit two. Remember, we're doing this one, not the fit one because the one was a little bit off and had a lag at seven. So fit two, and we're gonna do it for 30 days. See the H is 30 periods or 30 days, okay? So let's do that. And we build this F cast. That's just a uh, vector that we're putting the data in. And then we plot the F cast, so watch this. Boom, now look at this. This is where this starts to get magical. So this is with the 117. Remember, that's what we did. And uh, look at our data now. Doesn't it look a lot better? Now, see this? This is a straight line. We may not really want to have a straight line because even though it's accurate at the beginning, it may not be accurate as we go on. So we're going to take care of that in the next video. I'm going to show you how to make this even more accurate and more precise. But it's pretty cool. You can see where we're going right now. Now you're ending up with an actual forecast and a pretty accurate forecast at that based on all the testing that we've done. So please watch the next episode. This was four or part four. The next one's part five. And we're going to go deeper in this forecast. We're going to go deeper into uh, making sure that your predictions or your forecasts are very extremely accurate with ARIMA. Uh, thanks for watching. Please subscribe and like. And if you haven't watched the previous videos in this series, one, two, and three, please be sure and go ahead and do that uh, so you can see the exploratory data analysis, the decomposition of the data, and the autocorrelations and how we build and test this to get to the point where we did in this video where we actually built the model and we actually plotted the forecast. Uh, thanks again for watching and have a great day.